I think we can all say that uh, we love free things, obviously. When you're brand new to composing, you know, free sounds is what kind of gets you going. It gets you inspired, it gets some free sounds that you can use when you don't necessarily have the time, the money, or even the investment yet to kind of sink into this. But I think there comes a time when you start to kind of develop your own sounds, build your own collection, buy new sample libraries, and upgrade on these previous sounds and possibly you then rely less on the free sounds and more on the sounds that you bought. So can you really still benefit from free sounds as a pro composer? As you get better, do free sounds become less relevant? Is it worth it? Well, spoiler alert, I definitely think the answer is yes, and no, it's not because it's just free stuff, right? I think there's a little more to it than that. And Westwood sending over their first free library to test drive is kind of the perfect opportunity to talk to you about it. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. There are three significant reasons I think that free sounds can still very much benefit pro composers as much as they do beginning composers. That's outside the obvious that it's a free sound, why would you pass that up? <laughs> like why wouldn't you download something that you've been given for free? Well actually there are a few reasons you might not want to download a free library. For example, you might have hard drive space issues or the process to download it is kind of too complicated and it no longer seems worthwhile. Or maybe even the features don't make it feel like it's worthwhile, it's too limited. Now, a recent library that I've just been sent by Westwood uh, called Untold Strings, this is a free library that I think kind of resolves some of these problems. The great news is that it's pretty small, it's very easy to download because it's end case ready, it just downloads in through native access and it's up and ready to go. And you know, it has quite a few features, even for the limited sound that it offers. But beyond this sort of technical limitations or reason, there is one thing that a good free library, a good one, would offer a pro composer and a beginning composer alike, and that is a brand new sound to play with. So this is the first reason I think that free libraries are still very much useful to pro composers, and that is instant vibe, something brand new to try. Like just check out this untold strings library. instantly has this mood and texture right out of the box that is ready to kind of inspire you to write something. And that's why I think these are great. They provide really quick textures, something that you know instantly what this library is about and you can remember what it's about, which means it's very quick to load. It's also physically quick to load because there's not very many samples in it. So it's a pretty lightweight library as well. In this particular library, there's actually quite a lot of functionality. Even though it's one sort of main sound, there are sort of five presets and 10 controls for you to kind of muck about with. Like looking at another texture here. And you can instantly add to it and change it how you like. For instance, I like the idea of the release samples being a little bit longer so that, that way they kind of smear into the next note a little bit. And maybe I want some of this kind of reverb and crystallized sound, which I think is a uh, diffuse delay. I'm not too sure. There hasn't been any kind of like instructions yet. There's nothing when I hover over them, but I think that's kind of what it is. But let's have a listen. You can particularly hear the release there and the reverb giving it a little bit more space and overlap. You can also do really cool things like transpose the pitches down so that you get the same sort of texture somewhere else. For example, this D key. Has a lot of really wonderful gritty texture and the lower down D, an octave below, it kind of sounds quite normal, a normal typical low cello or double bass type sound. But if I transpose this pitch down, it shifts the same samples down an octave, in this case 12 semitones of the octave. So if I play that low D sound now, instead I'm going to get the sample that was up the top but played an octave lower, which is going to give it a lot more detail and that gritty, bitey texture from before.
And I don't know about you, but I think that has to be probably my favorite sound out of the whole thing. Now, the second reason that I think free libraries can still be very useful to pro composers is the way that they impact your workflow and inspiration. Now, whether you are an artist who's writing music for yourself and your own sort of artistic identity, or if you're a composer or producer writing music for someone else, the sounds that we use create a lot of inspiration and the tools that we use actually impact our workflow a lot more than we might realize. Let me give you an example. Like imagine if I took away your computer and gave you a pen and paper and sat you in front of a digital piano at home and said, now you need to write me a track. Would you write the same music you usually do? Maybe, but maybe not, and probably not. If you're used to writing like this, then obviously you're gonna continue writing the same style of music. But if this is very different, putting you in front of a piano with a pen and paper, you're going to probably hit limitations to that workflow that you wouldn't have had if you could you know, listen to all the sounds and textures at once on a computer. You might find you struggle because the workflow and the environment has changed. So what happens? Well, maybe you adapt to your environment, to the limitations, and you write something that you may never have expected or even written yourself normally, but because you're pressed up against those limitations, it forces you to think and create in a different manner. Now imagine I swap that digital piano out for Air Studios and the huge grand piano that Hans Zimmer used to write Interstellar, for example. Would that change the way that your music sounds? I honestly bet it would. <laughs> Both the way that we write music and the sounds that we use when we write with them really have a massive impact on the outcome of our music. So when you're writing your music, free libraries can give you a brand new, completely free sound to use to see what kind of inspiration or workflow changes and limitations it could offer you. When I quickly wrote a track with Untold Strings, for example, I found myself focusing a lot more on textural movements and changes and evolutions and subtlety, a lot more away from melody and, and into sort of harmony and structure and texture. I might not have done that with my regular libraries. In fact, I probably wouldn't have done that with, say, my regularly used BBC strings library. It's just not the library that would have done that. Now that sort of brings me on to point three, which is far more pragmatic in nature. And that is that free sample libraries, they provide you an opportunity not just to demo the library, because it's free, you can have it, but to demo the company. It's a taste of what they are about, essentially. I know that Westwood, for example, total vibe master. <laughs> like a lot of their sample libraries are intricate, they're, they're subtle, but they're rich in detail and they create this kind of mood and texture that I love. And I think Untold Strings really captures that very well. I mean, that's just my opinion on Westwood Instruments as a general rule, but I know that I really quite like a lot of their sample libraries and Untold Strings is no different which means that if you like Untold Strings, you might like other stuff. But it's not just how it sounds, it's also how it is used. For example, I quite like my libraries living in contact, so seeing Untold Strings live there along with their other products is a really good positive for me. I also really love just hitting a key and hearing a subtle change and evolution in the sound. Not because it's the only key I want to press, but because when I hold something down for a long time, particularly in film school, I want a little bit of subtle evolution because that's what gives it something unique and interesting while also holding back under dialogue and not obscuring what's going on. So it's like, it's a little something that I can enjoy and some other kind of curious listeners will enjoy, but it's not gonna get in the way of the main objective. So I know that if this library has that exemplified, then you know I'm probably gonna like the rest of their stuff. At least I'm more likely to. I actually have a totally other example for this as well. Untold Strings, as you gathered probably from the examples I've already given you, uh, is pretty much a sustains only library. There are some flutters and, and you know, kind of wow effects, but it doesn't really have any staccatos. Well, it, it, does, it definitely doesn't have any staccato sounds, but there is a library from Heaviosity, which is their foundation staccato strings. That is a staccatos only strings library, and it's a completely free one to download as well. And I thought this one would pair quite nicely with this library, which it certainly did. I was able to put some bass staccato notes in and then add some treble ones on top.
It just helped bring some like dancing rhythmic driving aspects to the second half of the track and it paired quite nicely with the Untold Strings library. Now while both of these are free libraries that you can download as a beginning composer and use these sounds to really kind of get your compositions moving and get them going. You can also take these two libraries, look at these two companies and go, this is kind of the sort of sounds that they have on offer. Westwood, more subtle, more rich in detail in certain aspects, but also heaviosity, a lot more punchy and lively, very cinematic in nature. It's just another example of how these libraries can be fantastic demos for what the company has to offer for you. So check out the link below for Westwood Untold Strings if you'd like to check it out further or want to download it for free, then you can do that through that link. It's the first free instrument by Westwood and they're going to be releasing a number of them, I believe, under the Roots moniker. So uh, keep tuned for those, I suppose. As always, feel free on the way out to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.